This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a review and a rating. It would be very, very helpful, enabling others to locate this podcast. I want to talk to you today about keep moving forward. Even if you feel stuck today, even if you feel overwhelmed, even if you feel that you're falling almost irreversibly farther behind, stop whatever you're doing and keep moving forward. One foot in front of the other in times like this may very well be defined as progress. There is in our world today some crises going on, and there always have been and always will be. A famous old American foot college football coach used to say in a crisis, don't hide behind anything or anybody. They're going to find you anyway. Tough situations, tough circumstances, you can't hide from them, you can't stay in bed, you have to get up and face it, and you're going to have to deal with with the situation at hand. If there were an easier way, a different way, I would be honored and happy to tell you what that is. But you have to keep moving forward. And I want to give you nine things that you can do to keep moving forward. Doesn't mean today that you have to do all nine, but here are nine suggestions of what to do. The first one is in the area of communicate. And I'm not right at this moment thinking of the normal ways we describe communication. You need to communicate to your team, your family, depending on what your situation or difficulty may be at a given time. But don't forget to communicate in a transparent way. People do not need leaders who never want to let down the guard, who always act as if they have it all figured out and they have their stuff all together. It's all right to admit you are trying to figure it out as well. It's all right to communicate this is the direction that seems the wisest course for today. But if we receive new information, if I see some things that I hadn't factored in, we're going to be mature enough, wise enough, transparent enough that we will recalibrate, change, do whatever we need to do. Now, we're not, this is not a podcast about crisis management, but there are some principles from crisis management that can help us in these kinds of uh, situations. When you are trying to manage a crisis, you have to be quick with the facts and slow with the blame. You have to communicate the facts and the situation as it is in real time and in reality. This goes on along with another maxim that I use often. Praise publicly, criticize, or tell others ways to improve privately. But leaders never cast blame. They accept responsibility. And it's your responsibility to communicate. Communicate what's going on, the facts as you understand them, to be as open and transparent, not to criticize and blame and run people down and to get in another political or inter-office rant and rave, just to calmly, coolly communicate the facts. Keep moving forward. You're going to have to communicate. The second thing is, one way of moving forward is there are many people who feel overwhelmed, not just you. And one of the best ways to keep moving forward is to help others, help your friends, help your family, uh, help people at the church, help people where you work. It Just invest in helping others. Somehow getting our eyes off of our problems and our circumstance and the difficulty we are in and to begin looking toward how can I assist someone else is one of the ways to kind of jar us into reality, jar us into action, and jar us into keeping one foot in front of the other and to keep moving. 
If you're feeling sad today, if you're feeling discouraged, perhaps one of the routes out of that would be to look around you and find someone that you can help. The third thing when you need to keep moving forward is define what your priorities are and work on them. Now, a lot of times when there's a crisis, some things have to be put on a top shelf, the back shelf, or let go for a little while because there are certain things that you have to really focus on. But you have to define the priorities. Those are the things you can't lose sight of or let go of. Define what your priorities are and then just keep working on them. Any crisis is an opportunity to make your life extraordinary in some way. And how you're going to do that is it's a wonderful time to, to just redefine what are my priorities and I am going to commit, or for most of us, recommit to those. The fourth is, in times like this, you and I have to be adaptive leaders. We just have to. So this is an excellent time to ask yourself, what do I need to stop doing? I mean, when everything's at an even keel and things are going well, uh, we can take on some things that are fun or they may have some interest for us, but they're really not moving us forward toward organizational goals, personal family goals. So one way to move forward is just to, to kind of think through what are some things I'm going to have to let go of right now. And um, another thing you're going to have to do when you're going through this kind of a time and you're trying to move forward is you're going to have to forget the way you did some things or at the minimum or the very least, you're going to have to learn how to adjust your playbook. All the hacks and all of the plans and things that you've done uh, in the past that seem to work so effectively may not work effectively in the climate you find yourselves in at this very moment. So a time like this to keep moving forward is a time to adapt. Let's discuss adapting in two ways. Why not quit doing some things that are not helping and at the minimum are not productive? And maybe there are some things I have to unlearn, forget about, and maybe I just need to adjust my playbook. Maybe I need to develop and build a new playbook. The fifth thing you need to do when we're keeping uh, moving is um, you are going to have to stay alert. You see, the real secret of, of when we're in a crisis and we're managing and we're trying to move our way forward, it's not always even what's good and what's bad. When you're in a, in a real difficulty, and especially a crisis, uh, the bad's already happened. We, our job is to keep it from getting worse than what it already is. And in order to do that, we need you to stay alert. You know, the things that uh, really will trip us up, at least in my life, are uh, those things I didn't see coming. There are times things are going to happen, difficulties. I can see we're not going to bring the numbers in. Um, certain people have uh, quit the job. There are certain things at play in the world, and you can kind of see those coming. But the crises that will define you, the anvil on which your leadership will be pounded out upon, is the ones that happened that you didn't see coming. Um, in the year 2020, when I'm writing this, there were some things that in December of last year or January of this year, we would never have seen them coming. That doesn't give us an excuse. It doesn't give us a pass that we don't have to be involved or that we can uh, take a leave of absence from leadership. We just have to remember to stay alert for what's coming our eye on the horizon, but our hand right steady today. And again, my friend, you don't have to get it all accomplished tonight or tomorrow or next week, but you can't become paralyzed. You have to keep moving forward. Uh, number six may be a little counterintuitive, but that would be one of the ways to keep moving forward is to begin investing in others. I've already talked about helping others. Helping is just general... Um, assistance that anyone can give. When I'm talking about investing, especially for you, leader, I'm talking about the gift of time. There are some ways that your steadiness, your life experiences, the things and challenges of life that you didn't think you were going to make it through 
but you did and here you are, it would be great for you to invest in others. It'd be good for you to spend time with others and to tell them together, we're going to make it out of this. We're going to make it through. Take extra time. Take extra effort. See what you need, what others need, and really, truly invest in them. The seventh is, and maybe one of the more significant ways to continually keep moving forward is to become committed to action. I often talk about this, but during this kind of a time, it is even more important. Now, here's why I think folks kind of get stuck or even almost a fear that is debilitating and paralyzing. Um, it, it's because um, in any moment of decision, of course, the best thing you can do is the right thing. Someone has said the next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. You see, the commitment to action, you have to be convinced that the worst possible outcome is in action. Many people are afraid that if I don't make the perfect decision, then all is lost. It is easier in certain business settings to overcome a bad decision and nearly impossible to overcome no decision. So there's one thing you have to remember. You are the chief person to make decisions. You have to make them. Now, you have to consult with others. You have to look at the data, the facts. You, you can collaborate and should. But at the end of the day, a decision has to be made. Quit being paralyzed about making a wrong decision. You can correct oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes you can correct a wrong decision fairly instantaneously. But it's almost impossible to overcome no decision. I meet with groups all the time who have done their best and almost turned it into an art form of meeting together for the sake of meeting, but never really, truly making tough decisions. Go ahead, even if a wrong decision can be corrected, mitigated, calibrated, tweaked, and adjusted, but you can't tweak and adjust and recalibrate nothing. So one way to keep moving forward is to commit yourself today, right now, this very moment, to taking action. The eighth thing that will help keep you moving forward is to commit to getting better. Commit to learning something. Nothing is lost if we learn something through all of it. We can learn to get better, to improve. The ninth and final one is focus, focus on improving the circumstance you find yourself. You'll say, well, this is beyond my control. Uh, maybe I should have reword, reworded it. You can't focus on improving a crisis or a problem, but you can focus on how all of us will improve because of this. You have to decide in life. Has everything been done to you or done for you? And I have the uh, advantage of several years of reflecting back over my life that I'll have to admit that there were things that I was groaning and moaning about that were done to me. This is awful. How could this happen to me? Why me? Why now? Why this? But with the, um, with the perspective of time, I see that it really wasn't done to me. It was done for me for an invaluable lesson was learned that I more than likely would never have learned had I not faced this particular trial. Conflict builds character and crisis defines it. Your character is built when you have to struggle, when you have to fight your way through it, work your way through it. And so a crisis doesn't build your character. A crisis merely defines what, in fact, is happening and transpiring in your life. My friend, I know these may seem like very perilous days where you're living, for you, your family, your work, 
and your organization, your not-for-profit, your friends. You're needed and your friends need you to keep moving forward. And I know you can do it. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, leave a written review and a rating. It would be so very helpful. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really, truly are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day.